Mononakwe, Global Head of Sustainable Markets at SMB Global. Thank you very much indeed for joining us here at Economy Middle East. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Now, I understand it's SMB Global's first participation at this year's Jitex Global. That's correct. Could you tell us a little bit more about what you expect to achieve here and the implications for sustainable capital markets in the region? Well, you know what? I think it's a really um, exciting watershed moment that we even have an impact section at JITEC. I mean, this is a technology co a conference that's been going on for many years now. But the fact that we actually have an entire venue dedicated to impact and sustainability, I think really reflects the fact that sustainability is integrally is integral and core to business decisions across all different industries. Um, we've arrived, so to speak. So I think, you know, especially here in Dubai, this is the frontier of, of, of these new world markets right now. And there's so much investment required to facilitate the global economic transition to a low carbon economy. And this is such a, an exciting, as I mentioned, watershed moment that, that we're bringing sustainability to this, not just conference, but to this industry and, and seeing what's going to happen going forward. And regionally, how big of an influence does the Middle East uh, play in the sustainable finance, in sustainable finance rather, and the role of ESG data within it? Well, you know, I think as a region, it is inherently very um, exposed to many of the different types of physical climate hazards and risks that we might traditionally think about when we talk about ESG. So, for example, behind you, you have the, oh, this is, I don't know if you can show it, but this is our data wall uh, where you can see, for example, the, the, the geographical geolocation asset level exposure to different physical climate hazards. As a region, you know, this is one of the most sensitive areas in terms of heat stress, drought, water shortages, rising sea levels in the case of the UAE. And, um, you know, the, these are the very types of issues that global investors are thinking about when it comes to ESG. Um, not only that, but as an economy in the Gulf countries in general for the region are heavily dependent on fossil fuels and oil reserves. And as we know, that's no longer going to be as large of a part of the global energy grid mix going forward. So we're in the midst of one of the largest industrial scale transformations in history. And I think these markets here in this region are at the precipice of that and how well they are able to transition will really set the tone and the pace for the global transition. So I think it's a very important region in terms of the global. Uh, and if I was to ask you key competitive advantages ESG data provides businesses, a little bit more specific if you would be so kind. Sure, I mean, I think it's helpful just to take a step back and think about um, the role of ESG data and what it is it does to begin with. So, you know, what's interesting is if you look at the value of a corporation going back um, several decades, there's a brilliant study by Ocean Tomo, they do it every year, um, and they look at what's driving the value of a corporation Starting in as much as like the 1950s, for example, it was physical assets. So we're talking about, you know, physical capital, um, assets on the balance sheet. What's changed is with the rise of technology, the rise of uh, information technology and patents, what we're seeing is intellectual capital in the form of intangible assets actually account for a much larger proportion of corporate value today. So I think we've had a complete role reversal. It was something like 80% of the value of a corporation came from the tangible. Now more than 90% comes from the intangible. Why is that relevant? Well, if you look at the, the history of financial data and reporting, it has not modernized to keep pace with this large scale change. Intangible asset value is notoriously difficult to measure and looking at balance sheet flows is no longer enough to assess where the risks and opportunities lie. So what ESG data really is, is it's about extra financial, meaning outside of the traditional financial process, like new and alternative sources of information that allow us to uncover hidden externalities where the risks might actually be. So just to give you a more concrete example, reputational risk is now incredibly important. Companies find that they need a social life, they need to maintain a social license to operate. And so there's this real feedback mechanism uh, that actually plays out quite materially. So from an investor's perspective, having the right data and the tools to equip them to assess where the risks are, is critical to make sure that they have a resilient investment portfolio to, the, to face the real world economy risks that they're facing. I see. And how do you see the future of uh, sustainable capital markets? What are you going to be contributing to that in, uh, at, at SMP Global? Well, you know, I think the fact that we are here at JITEX, which is a technology conference, and we're looking at the intersection of sustainability and technology, I think that's really setting the tone for what we can expect to see in the years ahead. Um, as I mentioned already, sustainability is now integral to almost every single industry. It's about mainstreaming that and the intersection with technology and the new and innovative tools that we're seeing at rapid pace of innovation 
become uh, a key part of driving businesses going forward. So I think for us at S&P Global, we really see ourselves as solution providers that really equip investors with the decision useful intelligence they need, whatever their own investment objective may be. We're not here to sway investors one way or the other. We're just here to provide you with the most up-to-date information. And this is this is honestly uh, really just about making sure that, that investors have all the information they need to make whatever decisions they find aligned with their own investment beliefs. Great. And while I have you here, COP28 just down the line, what do you expect to achieve from COP28? And how do you think that contributes to this region? Uh, what, what should the outcomes, ideal outcomes be? Well, you know, it's funny. I've had a lot of conversations with many investors in the run up to previous COPs and this COP. And I would say that in general, it's very difficult to measure the success of a COP in the immediate aftermath. This is something that tends to be uh, there's a bit of a time lag. So it, it remains to be seen what would be ideal to come out of this COP and, and what, what would be a measure of success. But what I will say is that simply shedding a light on the unique um, ESG conversations taking place in this region, bringing people together physically in a location such as the United Arab Emirates, is, shed, is shining a spotlight on the significance of this region in terms of unlocking the, the, the global transformation to a low carbon economy. Couldn't be in a better location in terms of bringing together um, the Western world and the Eastern world in terms of uh, you know the, bridging that gap. Uh, the North uh, global North-South divide is also a really critical piece of the transition, making sure that we're not um, pursuing environmental objectives at the expense of societal goals. And I think having it in a region like this is the perfect place to have those very difficult conversations to make sure we're bringing along all different economies to the table to help drive this forward. So balance is key. And, um, and if I was to add one more, what are the most complex ESG uh, policies that companies have to deal with? I know sector by sector it differs, but, but what's the most common one that you have to solve, let's say? To be honest, I mean, I think you're right to point out that it's an industry specific thing. If you're looking at what is material, financially material and relevant within industries, you're going to absolutely talk about different topics. But I would say it's not so much one specific topic, but how do you bring all of these different KPIs and metrics together in a holistic strategy that is easy to explain and justify, while at the same time, um, not watering down the impacts of any of the of the different things that you might be pursuing. Just transition is a really good example of that. It's the complexity that's inherent to uh, um, optimizing across many different questions, which is why I think it's important for investors to be really clear on their own investment philosophy, their own theory of change, and to make sure you know that they're leveraging the expertise of folks like us at S and P Global to help them support whatever it is that they believe to be the transition and to align with that glide path. This is ultimately about uncertainty, and it's really just how can we help navigate to reduce the surprises along the way so that investors aren't um, uh, having to face undue losses. That's really what this is all about. Wonderful, Mananakwi. Thank you very much indeed for joining us here at Economy Middle East.